Bluetooth mode. Connected. Well, it seems like we've made new friends. Fresh off my unboxing of their WGP15 EOS Pro wireless gamepad, Fantech reached out again and sent me this, their GoTune wireless headphones. I'm not gonna lie, they look pretty baller. Let's get them unboxed and tested. But before we continue with the video, let's keep the lights on here in the studio. This video is brought to you by Sneak Attack Design Lab. They're a clothing company that specializes in technical fashion, more commonly known as techwear, and you can see me in their clothes in most of my videos. I've been supporting their brand ever since I met them back in 2019, and now they're returning the favor. Head on over to this link, you can find it in the description as well, to get 10% off your order from their site. Check their clothes out, you're bound to see something badass over there that'll look great on you. Thank you very much to Sneak Attack for this exclusive promo for my viewers. Now, back to the video. So the GoTune are a pair of wireless headphones by Fantech, made to be a budget and stylish addition to your home or on-the-go gaming setup. As we can see here on the box, they're going for an understated, classy approach. Clear product photo here at the front, and dare I say, they look like the Sony WH-1000XM5. Also advertised here at the front are its dual mode connection via Bluetooth and wired, and its 20 hour playback time on a full charge. Alright, that's pretty impressive. At the back, we see some model photos and a preview of the other colors on offer. Very tasteful selection here, Fantech. Gray, beige, and matte black are solid options for a lifestyle wireless headset. Apart from that, we can see the other features on offer, like Bluetooth 5.3 connectivity, a built-in equalizer, a low-latency gaming mode, and a foldable swivel design. Alright. Upon opening up the box, we can see the headphones in a plastic mold with a plastic hard cover to protect it from bumps during shipping. Underneath is a Ziploc baggie containing the documentation and cables. First off, we get the USB-A to USB-C charging cable. It looks to be just USB 2.0, so don't expect super fast charging speeds with this. Next up is the 3.5mm audio jack. Looks to be a meter long, but kind of hard. If you're going to use this wired, I suggest getting a good, soft braided cable as a replacement for this. Preferably in grey, to match the color of the headphones. Finally, we have the warranty card and the manual. Alright. Heading on over to the headphones, first thing I notice is how light they are. According to Fantech, these weigh in at around 205 grams. And they're pretty light. Alright, product tour time. As we can see, the GoTune Wireless is a monotone headphone, entirely in this matte grey color. It's pretty snazzy. The only non-grey color parts are these golden Go prints at the ends of the headband. The entire headphone is made of plastic, with imitation leather being used for the headband and the ear cushions. At the back of the left ear cup, we have the control buttons. Here at the top is the EQ button, followed by the volume up and down buttons, and finally the multifunction button or the on and off button. It's pretty straightforward. Underneath all the buttons are the USB-C charging port and the 3.5mm audio jack. For ergonomics, the headband can be stretched apart easily, the forks can telescope, and the cups have a swivel function for hanging flat on your neck. One thing missing from here is up and down tilt, but we'll see later how that affects the ergonomics. Alright, that's the tour around this very simple headphone. Let's get you through how to use them. So to turn the headphones on and off, you have to press and hold this button until the LED indicator light turns on. There is also a voice confirmation played through the speakers to confirm that it's actually turned on. Power on! Bluetooth mode. Connected. Pressing and holding the button while the headphones are turned off activates Bluetooth pairing. And since this is a multifunction button, it can also answer or reject calls via a quick press and a two second press respectively and it can even bring up the voice assistant on your phone via a long press while it's turned on. The volume up and volume down buttons also act as forwards and backwards buttons for your music player. Just press and hold either one for those functions. And lastly, the EQ button will cycle through the normal, pop, rock, and country EQ settings. 
Double pressing the EQ button will also turn on gaming mode, reducing latency at the expense of faster battery consumption and slightly lower audio quality. Alright, those are all the features. It's time for the sound test. Alright, we're going to have three stages of test here. First off, I'm going to run the headphones in front of my recording mic so you can have sort of a preview how it sounds. I will also be cycling through the EQ options so you can kind of understand the differences between the four EQ settings. Second is my actual feedback about the sound quality and the ergonomics of the headphones. This is the meaty part. And lastly, I'm going to do a mic test. Alright, clear? Let's try it out. First off, the EQ test. Do remember that this is in no way a scientific test. This is just a way to slightly inform you how the GOAT tune sounds and how it does EQ. Let's start with normal. Normal. Did that sound alright? Then my personal test. Ergonomics first. While I think the headband and the cushions are soft enough for short to medium length listening sessions, I don't think I would be entirely comfortable wearing it for the whole day since it has one major ergonomic flaw. There is no tilt up and tilt down. This means that for big headed people like me, the cups do not sit flat on my ears. Instead, they're kind of pushing into the lower part of my ears and are kind of loose at the top of my ears. Another thing I'd like to point out is how loud the clickiness of the buttons are when wearing it. I think the switches on these buttons are too firm and clicky to be in these headphones. Each press rings inside the cup and is hugely jarring to hear. Then for sound quality. On normal EQ, the headphone sounds very forward. There's definitely a big emphasis on mids and highs in this headphone. That makes it somewhat great for guitar or piano-centric music. Bass is controlled and kind of pushed back, so the headphones don't sound as overbearing like most gaming headphones are wont to do. A big downside to its sound is clarity and resolution, though. It struggles to resolve very heavy or busy tracks, mainly because of its prominent mids. Pop EQ introduces a lot of bass into the mix while keeping the mids intact. It makes the headphones sound warmer without sounding too dark. Mid bass resolves a bit better in this EQ. In Everything Everything's at the end of the contender, the headphones are able to make it sound enjoyable with good texture on the lows without losing too much of the highs. Rock EQ is somewhat confusing to me. It takes away most of the sub-bass that was clearly present in the pop EQ and focuses mostly on the top end of the bass in the mids. What? Why do you do this? It makes no sense. In Bring Me The Horizon's Teardrops, the track sounds lacking since it's missing that subtle sub-bass hits in the chorus. The vocals are okay though. For country EQ, I put on Brothers Osborne Stay A Little Longer and somewhat enjoyed the tamed mids and mid-bass. Although, like the rock EQ, the sub-bass has entirely gone away, kind of taking away the excitement in the music during big emotional drops, like in the solo in this song. Clarity does improve a lot in this EQ mode, though. Personal recommendation is stay with the pop EQ on the go tune wireless. It's the one that sounds the best. Lastly, this is how the mic on the Fantech go tune sounds. I mean, it's not like they're going to be recording any vocal tracks with this anyways. Alright, all things considered, this is a pretty nice entry-level Bluetooth headset. It's stylish enough to not clash with your outfits, it's got okay sounding speakers, it's not the best, but you know, you have to make do with what you have. And it's got the basic features down pat that you're not going to feel wanting too much. The ergonomics and the button noise need to be improved though, but they're not exactly deal breakers here. Alright, so that's the Fantech GoTune wireless headphone. Do you have any questions about it? Leave them down in the comment. While you're there, give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more tech and tech-adjacent videos. That's it. 
I'll see you guys next time. Bye.